Matt, I'm a mental health blogger and campaigner. It's in our nature to be scared or at least cautious of things we don't understand. It's a natural defence to the snake hiding in the leaves. But when it comes to mental health or disability in general, it can lead to misunderstanding and stigma. I want to take some of the terms and ideas that seem foreign and confusing to those outside the bubble. I want to try and answer questions openly and honestly. So whether you prefer to read this in an article or watch this video, you can help break down that stigma as we explore mental health. you might hear the announcer say that the following program contains scenes of an adult nature. I would call this a content warning rather than a trigger warning. Adult nature is a bit vague but it enables you, the viewer, to decide whether it is suitable to watch. Given it's half term and I know little Timmy's there, it might not be suitable. Trigger warnings are similar. They enable you to make an informed decision about whether to watch the program or read the article. I feel the difference is rather than a vague warning that this might have something unsuitable for little Timmy, it tends to be a list of keywords and topics that could trigger a reaction or emotional response. Let's say you suffer from PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, after a particularly nasty incident in your life. At the top of the video or article would be the trigger warnings, normally TW and then a list of keywords or topics. You can then decide whether you feel well enough to continue. You might decide that there are topic there you don't want to confront and you'd rather avoid it. Or maybe you want to give yourself a few days, wait till you feel a bit better and then confront it. Or maybe you feel up to reading and watching it right now. Trigger warnings enable you to make that informed decision whether you feel you can or cannot expose yourself to that difficult subject. There are lots of spin-off questions that come from this and as long as you're open, honest and understanding, your questions, comments and feedbacks is more than welcome, down below or on the article. I'll cover two questions before we wrap up. Firstly, what do we mean by trigger? At some point you'll have watched a TV show with your parents or your nan and some sort of kinky sex scene will appear on screen. You cringe. At least that's the very least harmful end of the spectrum, but that is a reaction to a trigger. I'm the son of an alcoholic. My mother drank herself to death and after many years and a few attempts at counselling, I'm pretty much okay to talk about it read something about it or watch something on that subject. However, the 13 year old me would not be. Trigger warnings mean rather than walking into something blind or reading into something blind and then reacting to it, perhaps in my case causing a depressive episode, maybe even with self-harm, I could make an informed decision. Question two, why am I so awful at trigger warnings? When writing my blog or when I write for the Huffington Post, I try to give an idea of what's to come in the headline and the first paragraph. I prefer this than to give a list of keywords as sometimes it could give out, get out context. I generally like the idea of trigger warnings because it empowers you, the reader or viewer, but I would like a universally agreed format or method for it. For instance, here in the UK, most food has a traffic light system. There is an agreed standard for equals yellow or what equals red and how the icons appear. I'd like that, perhaps before an article or a video or a TV show, we could show the TW and then the list of key words. The words that appear first are the trigger topics that are covered in the most detail and therefore need the most warning, whereas the words at the end of the list are just mentioned and so carry a lower risk. Or is the headline in the first paragraph enough? On a programme like EastEnders where difficult subjects are always tackled, would trigger warnings help? Regardless of everyone's mental health, or would it just deter people from watching because they knew it was going to be a difficult episode? I'd love to hear your feedback. As long as you're open, understanding and honest, your feedback and your comments down below are more than welcome. And I'd love to debate it. Thanks for following me on Instagram.
Instagram and Twitter, all the information is in the doobly-doo down below as it's called. I'm using a software on my phone called OpenView. Let me know if there's something else out there you'd like me to try with. Thanks for watching.